So obviously this is brand new to the channel, the first interview we have done, hopefully it's one of many. Uh, we're going to talk about the Division Recruited novel, if you've not already, if you've not already guessed. Uh, we've got Thomas Parrott with us, if you've just heard his lovely voice in chat, he's agreed to, to be interviewed. The book is available on Audible now, I'm not sure about other audiobook platforms, uh, but... Uh, it's, oh, it's everywhere. Oh, it's everywhere, everywhere. there you go, so... So do find it here, there, and everywhere. Thank you, Meryl. I'm going to turn the music off, actually. Yeah, we don't want anything drowning out my dulcet tones. That's a very good idea. Uh, but uh, it was out in the US in paperback, I believe, on the 1st of February. Mm -hmm. The UK... Oh, no, that, that was, the, uh, that was the, 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 the shit. Now I'm stuttering. That was the uh, e-book. All right, okay. It took... Yeah, we didn't get the... <laughs> it took another like month and a half before the actual paperback got to the States. All right. Okay. And it still hasn't gotten to the UK, so no, hey. I believe the UK around the 12th of uh, May when I looked up uh, looked up last. <sighs> That's uh, the dream. <laughs> with the, uh, the German localization version coming as soon as possible. ASAP. So that's where you can get your hands on it, chat. So here, there, and everywhere, basically. And if you can't get your hands on the paper book, just listen to the audio book. Like we said before, the lady does an absolute awesome work with it. It sounds absolutely brilliant. It's really, really good. Uh, I have done a command uh, for... If you have a look there, you can check out all of Thomas's previous work on the Goodreads website, and that is his Twitter. I'm sure you would appreciate a follow over on there as well. And uh, yeah, so first of all, I listened to it. It's excellent. I would like to congratulate you on an awesome entry to the Division series. I'm a huge fan. If you've not already, you can tell that already. Uh, I love. I appreciate that. I was really everything. scared that like you, this was all an ambush. This was <laughs> no. going to be like. Uh, was... Now that I have you here, why <laughs> did you do this? Like, no, just... it's, it's absolutely brilliant. I was saying to the guys last night when we were playing, it's very much like reading what we play as a mission in the game. Like, you've absolutely nailed it from the use of the tech to the enemies to the scenarios Thank kind you. of playing out. It's absolutely brilliant. So, chat, it's not just because he's here. Believe me, it's brilliant. Especially for any Division fan as well. You'll absolutely love it. Uh, so, yeah, I said that. And so, yeah, we'll move on with the questions. So, first of all, we see you've got a Twitch ID. We won't expose it too much. But are you a regular on Twitch in the uh, in the Division category? Not in the division category. Um, I, I honestly, I barely get on Twitch at all these days. Um, I used to be, but uh, I mean, I'm working on the next book in the series, yes. so I'm spending most of my time working. What? And then uh, the last thing I want to do is look at a screen when I'm done working for the day. Yeah, I hear you though. That's for sure. What kind of games uh, are you really into? Then, what would you be watching if you were if you were on Twitch? I usually watch horror games. All right. Okay. Nice. Nice. Because. Um, well, like, I don't want to watch a game I'm going to play myself, right? Because I don't yeah. want to be spoiled on Spoilers, it. Spoilers, yeah. And, um, like, as, we, we've already, as we've already noted, I don't have great reflexes. <laughs> so, uh, watching horror games is a nice, you know, you can enjoy it without actively playing it. Like, that's, yep. that's, that's, that's the sweet spot I for me. I still have a few, uh, a few jump scares in there at the same time. So... Really, that that was a that was a little bit of an extra question. I didn't pre warn me that one chat. But tell us about yourself then, and how this book came about. Uh, whew. I am an American. Shame on me. Um, I live in Georgia, which is the southeastern United States. Um, I have been a professional writer for a couple of years now. And as to how the book came about. Uh, it was actually a really weird set of circumstances because I was not supposed to be the one to write this book. Um, I was, <laughs> it's a little depressing, but I was not their first choice. Right, um, okay. What happened was that, uh... <laughs> sorry, I just saw a question, made me laugh. Uh... <laughs> what happened was that the person who was originally going to write it, who had uh, pitched the idea and everything, had to back out. Right. And I had just finished a different project for Aconite, which is the publisher. And they were like, oh my God, we need this done really fast. Would you be willing to take this on for us? And I was like, please throw me in that briar patch. Um, so that's how that happened. 
Great. Uh, just to go in off that then a, l a little bit. So how much interaction had, uh, did you have with the, the game studio, if any? Tons. Really? Um, they take this stuff very seriously. Right. Uh, I mean, say whatever you want. Like, I, I, I genuinely don't know what the fan vibe is about the studio, but um, they care a lot about the IP and what's being done with it. Uh, and what was really cool to me was it wasn't just a they told me what to do relationship. They were really interested in taking elements that I was coming up with and um, finding ways to bring them forward. Um, so, like, the stuff that happens in the book isn't just my... Like, it's, it isn't like a side, a, a parallel universe or something. That is absolutely what's happening in the Division universe. Yes. Okay, great. Are you allowed to tell us who you worked with? Any popular names? Yannick or anybody like that? Or are you not allowed to tell uh, us? Yannick I worked with. Um, Lauren was my main point of contact. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, she was. She's their, uh, I think, like story specialist. I can't remember what her actual title is, but oh, she's like the one a, who concerns herself with the story of it all. Like and a um, specialist, I guess, something like that. Yeah, and so she was the one I worked with mainly. She was the one who was... No joke, making sure that I had my agents wearing their gas masks in the right places. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. Really? Uh, you know, like, she was like, oh, don't use that gun. That gun's not in the game. And I was like, well, it's in real life, but all right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that was, you know, they, she, she was really great. She helped me um, a lot of, like, the, 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 the little... Like the tiny details that interweave with other stuff, she was really helpful there because she, I'll tell you what, she really cares about that stuff. Yeah, um, you, you could tell you'd had a close, that's why I was kind of leading into that question because when I was listening to it, like I was saying, when we were playing the game itself, them tiny details are all the, like it really does, that does really come across that that was really done well. Yeah, and then a large part of that stuff, well, that is thanks to her. I mean, I did my research, but there's no replacement for someone who lives and breathes it. Yes, yeah. That kind of leads on then to the uh, the next question. What interested you? Did you? What interested you the most then about that division law, and what were your favorite parts? Um, they gave me like guides, and I also spent a lot of time like reading the wikis and stuff. Yep. Um, and honestly, what finally hooked me was I was reading a faction description for a spoiler faction that I'm not going to say anything because you can read the book and find out. Um. But the note was that there are 33 million people left alive in the United States. And that sounds like a lot until you consider that before the green poison, it was, you know, uh, 10 times that. Yeah. And um, that really hit me. Like, I that was where I was really like, oh, OK, like there's something to bite into here because that's. That's something that, like, no one who lives in this world has come through unscathed. Yep. Everyone's lost somebody. Um, and, like, just the kind of people that that leaves and the marks, the trauma, I think that's really interesting to dig into. Yep. Yep. That was good. Yeah, I suppose as well, I don't know when, and I could, I'm spinning off a little bit here, was you writing this during our during COVID times, or had you already finished the kind of story at that point? So obviously, what they're going through in you know in that world, there kind of is some relation to people losing people over the the times we had in real life. I guess you know what I mean. Um, no, I, I wrote this like I said on a very short schedule. Uh, the same year it got released. Oh right, okay. Right. Or like the year before, rather. That's what so, I mean. So um, like really the, I, I wrote this last year. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nowadays it's hard to write about a uh, a pandemic without you know thinking about the actual pandemic. The obvious comparison. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think I got it as bad as the person who actually had to write the pandemic novel, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. which is another one from Aconite. Uh, if y'all played the pandemic board game, she's somebody else had to write that book and they actually pushed it because they were it was supposed to come out like right when covid became a thing right. it was really unfortunate um but i mean honestly the green poison is so much worse yes. than any pandemic humanity's ever suffered <laughs> yeah. like it it goes harder than the black plague so i didn't feel like the the comparisons are too obvious yeah like you know nobody's out there 
just puking blood and abandoning the you know abandoning the cities or whatever um yeah. looking over the shoulders just in case that puke does does appear yeah that's not the level that we are at thankfully i don't want to live at that level um so yeah like it was in my head and i included i let it inform what it could i made like i think a joke about how useful masks can be for lots of reasons yep yep um not least of which is keeping out the stench of all the dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, um, piled up everywhere. But yeah, I, yeah, it just it didn't feel like I I didn't want it to feel that real. Yes, and yes. I don't think it did. No, I didn't. No, yeah, that's good. No, I totally agree. Uh, right. So next question: Have you played the games, and are you a, a fan of the division anyway? Okay. Yes, I've played. Um, I, I sat down. I had not played before I got the job. Okay. But I did sit down and I played because I I take these jobs seriously and I wanted to do my part of getting it right. Yep. Yep. Um, I also watched. I legitimately like dozens of hours of Let's Play. Yep. Yep. Um. But, like I said, like it's the games are fun, but it's not a game I'm good at. I've already admitted that. <laughs> uh, like. I, if I, I don't want to go be bad at something in my spare time, does that make sense? <laughs> like, is, yeah, yeah. Did you jump um, in with just the new game with the Division 2, or did you go back to the uh, the original game as well? I played both. Oh, you played both. Nice, nice. Yeah, because they're both very, uh, very different games, really, even though they're both looter shooters. Uh, and that story really hit, your story really goes really in line with the gre- how the first story starts off a little bit as well, but although it does kind of, merge into the the second story for us as well so yeah, yeah well technically it's the furthest point in the timeline that's been revealed which yeah. i think is cool uh it goes further than any other thing has so far which yeah. i think it's it made me happy I've, I've just that's that's piqued my interest a little bit and i'm gonna ask a bit of another sorry he's gonna hate me he's gonna be like why did i agree to this he keeps adding questions and he didn't plan for but um, you're doing fine you're doing great <laughs> we're doing good but do you know were do you kind of have any interaction with what's going to come on netflix at any point further in the no. year no okay i have nothing to do with that uh and that's not even like i would answer way more slyly if i was <laughs> <laughs> i wish that i was getting some of that sweet netflix money um <laughs> no that's that's somebody else some other writer will be handling Separate that story. uh but hey netflix call your boy i could uh, <laughs> uh i am happy to be a consultant Netflix. He did a good job with the book. I can give him. Yeah, like I nailed it. Listen to this guy. Come on, hook me up. (laughs) Yeah, no. Um, that's no. That that's not my. I wish. That's all I can say about that. I wish. (laughs) All right. So we'll move on a little bit. So, uh, was it hard to talk about and bring factions to life in the book that obviously us as the game players uh, would know about, and maybe bring some to life that they are not so familiar about? Um, I mean, obviously it's easier doing the ones y'all haven't heard of yet, just because I don't have to worry about like, this isn't the vision someone had in their head. Yes. Does that make sense? Um, like I don't have that pre-built expectation with the new factions we introduced, Yep. but, um, I mean, the key for me was really just sort of making it a little more real um like looter shooters by their nature are a little detached from reality there's just no way around that like nobody's going to be massacring waves of people to steal their pants um <laughs> yeah looking for that special pair of pants that they really wanted <laughs> With that special um, snap. <laughs> so like for me it was really just about t- tunneling in on the motivations of the factions in the lore and really focusing on like what kind of people would go along with those motivations. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like that was, that was how I tried to handle the factions that are already, that were pre-existing. Yep. I suppose, well, you've got to, I suppose there was some kind of responsibility as well for the factions that we didn't know about that. You've got to kind of grab our interest to make them as interesting as ones we did know about, I suppose. Like, when I, I'm trying not to give anything away for chat because we're doing no, no spoilers, chat. But it's got a you know the, like the cleaners and stuff. They're they're very specific. They're, you know that when someone looks at a cleaner with the big gas tank on the back and the mask, like that visually on in a game, they look like really really good. 
So when, right. you, when you've got to pull out there in a book with a new faction and kind of bring it towards the guy, oh, actually, is this one of the factions that's going to be my favorites in this universe? Or, so that's quite uh, quite difficult sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I was given really good stuff to work with, honestly. I mean, yeah, like, I'm trying not to spoil anything either. <laughs> um, I think the hook for the new factions is sufficiently cool it is. that uh, people will not be disappointed. Yeah, no, they're good chat. Definitely, they're definitely good. So uh, we covered it a little bit, but what was your, kind of then your main inspiration then uh, for the story? I looked all over the place. Um, there's, like I, I've mentioned elsewhere, I read Lewis and Clark journals. Yep. As a way of getting into like that idea of trekking out into the unknown, because that's a big part of what the book's about. That's why it's called operation crossroads is because we're heading into the parts of the country that we haven't seen yet in the story um and i looked at uh planetary romance books like um edgar rice burroughs work stuff like that just because i feel like i mean it, it is a more grounded world obviously we're still dealing with earth we're still dealing with humans but the green poison has changed everything yeah. and the america it's left behind isn't the same as the one that existed before and um so yeah like i mean and of course there's the the visual inspiration and stuff like um i am legend uh there's some visual inspiration in like um oh gosh what's the other video game <laughs> something i can't remember the name of the other video game but what about the guy who has to save the girl and there's the the fungus everywhere uh yeah anyways uh yeah okay. um <laughs> last of us last, last of, of us, us. Yes. Boom. yes it's only one of the most famous games in the world i don't know why i couldn't remember it um but yeah last of us helped as far as like you know that tumbling falling down grandeur yes yep. um and i also watched um you know stuff on tv like uh earth after humans yep and it's honestly it's amazing how little of a ripple we would leave behind how quickly stuff like cities just fall away. Yes. Uh, crumble in on themselves without constant upkeep. And um, and I think that was something I let, you know, climb in my ear and... God, that's mournful. But yeah, it's the truth. That was, I mean, that's the world they're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is where everything's yeah. kind of falling yeah, apart on them. That's the reality, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So then, um, talking about then the details that you had to write in with the game's law. Obviously, we've got like the SHD tech and stuff and things like that. Was that sure. difficult for you to try and adapt into a, a written piece rather than just one we would see in a game? You know, it was interesting. Um, here's the thing about that. I think... <laughs> I try, I got to be really careful about how I do this. <laughs> um, there is that same detachment that we've talked about between like the way stuff works in a video game and trying to make it that next step more real. Yep. Just so that it doesn't hit weird. Like, Oh, this guy has 27 drones in his pocket. Uh, <laughs> and we're never going to question where he's getting those from. Yeah. Um, you know, like the people in the book use as shade tech and it's shown to be a big game changer, yep. but they have to use it sparingly because there's not just huge stockpiles of the stuff sitting around. Yes. Um, and also on top of that, the direction that I got from Massive was that they don't want this to be a story about superheroes. Yep. Um, they're trying to lean more grounded. So most of the time what you get is more grounded people trying to make the do the best they can with limited resources i think people forget a little bit because at the beginning of division one it made it really you know obvious that these are just real people that go about their everyday lives and then they're activated you know then they're, they're not a superhero they're not these super agents not a jack bauer you know they're they're just real people that could be sat yeah. in a bar next year you know yeah that, that, that was the <laughs> yeah uh i mean it comes up in the book the fact that Really, it's sort of an unrealistic demand that's been placed on them. Yes. Um, that, oh, well, the world went to shit and no reinforcements are on the way. You're all there is. Uh, so, hey, if you could just go fix everything, 
<laughs> That'd be with great. a couple of fancy toys. <laughs> um, that would be really great. Yeah, like if you could go fight people who outnumber you, you know, a hundred to one. Uh, please, that would be wonderful for us. Um, <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, like, oh, also in the meantime, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I need to take a sip of water. <clears throat> in the same time, they, uh, I mean, they're having to leave behind their own families. Yeah. Yeah, everything this isn't to them. Yeah, like you're deploying effectively. It's a military deployment happening while the world is falling apart and you're leaving behind the people you love to go try to save the world. Um, and I, I, that's, I mean, obviously that would be so hard to do. Uh, like the instinct, right, would be to hunger down and protect your people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the division demands more from its agents than that. Yeah. And I think that that's an interesting thing to tackle in the books. Yeah, no, it was really good. I, so just talking about the skills, I very, I very much liked how you tackled the heals. With the, uh, I'm not going to go into it too much because in the game we can just heal, you know, juice ourselves up and then carry on and keep on going on like a timer. But I think you had in the when you brought it to a book, I think you know it was it's a, a main plot point in some ways. I think it was uh, yeah adapted really really well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was one of the ones that we actually had a lot of back and forth with Massive about because in the first book, like, or in the first game, block. Uh, they just kind of like, I guess, give you a shot and you're all better. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> never mind those 20 bullets riddling your colon. Uh, <laughs> you're you're going to be fine. Walk it off, sonny. Um, and obviously you can't really do that. Uh, so we sort of like, I made it more fanciful at first. Yep. And then they were like, no, like grittier. Yep. Don't no. There's no magic nanotech to heal them. Like, that's not the world this is. And I was like, okay, uh, that's what you want. That is what you will get. Gritty, yeah. gritty, gritty. Yeah, it, was, uh, yeah, it was really, really good. Uh, so, uh, what experiences then from the game uh, did you really want? To, so, obviously, you know what skills they have in the game and you know and things like that. Which were the ones, your favorite ones, that you really wanted to, to bring alive into? Oh, uh, Firefly. The Firefly, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, you you've read the book, so I think you, I guess you've seen the scene where I finally got to <laughs> yeah, to yeah. break out the Firefly, and yeah. I was so excited for that. Yeah. Um, Is, you like and you that's warm, all I'm gonna you say. up a little bit. You start with the the smaller skills, and then you get bigger and bigger as you as you go through. Well, yeah, because they're getting more more and more desperate. Yeah. I, I know, like it was so funny because like I got to do stuff that people would never use in the game. Yeah, uh, like I don't care if it's a good build. Um, like that's the fun part that's, is I yeah, get to the, be like the idea behind the firefly is that it's it's awesome yeah 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 like I get to make it awesome in my world yeah. um and that was you know uh yeah but yeah like I that was actually the scaling up was an intentional thing to try to convey their desperation like they start off with here's a flashbang and then it's uh increasingly like oh no no things are getting worse and worse we got to pull out all the stops <laughs> um. <laughs> Whatever fancy, yeah, you know, if you have an ace up your sleeve, now's the time to yeah. play it. Oh, you've got one of them. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so that was that was a lot of fun. I tried to, I sort of tried to cover my bases because I didn't want anyone who has a favorite skill to be like, oh, I didn't get to see that play out. Yeah. So I yeah. sort of tried to do the rounds a yeah. little bit yeah, um, think, and not you, make you, that obvious. You did cover most of the fan favorites, I think. You uh, Good, good. Yeah, that makes me glad did. to hear. Uh, so, uh, did you set out to write this story then for fans of the game, or just anyone that likes the kind of genre of like survival? It's always a balancing act yeah. with stuff like this. Um, then that's the reality of it, because uh, like for you, for you guys, this is a chance to see more of the world that you love. And the way I would write for someone like y'all is different from the way I would write for someone um, who doesn't know anything about the world. Yep. Uh, and this first book is going to lean a little bit more towards um, the people who are new, because we do want to onboard them. We want them to be able to pick it up and start reading. But, I mean, it's not a secret anymore. Compromised is coming on the heels of Recruited. Yes. And obviously, it's now that we have established the ground rules, I can start to play with stuff yeah. um, and dig in deeper. And I think that... As the series, as the, in this next book, if it goes further than that, fingers crossed, we're, I'm going to get to lean more and more. 
Sorry. Yeah, I am Southern. I tried. Don't don't tell anybody. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was that, that was. Uh, I think that as it goes on, it's going to lean more like because by then I'll be able to have made the new people into fans, and they will hopefully um, y'all will get more out of it as we go along. But I do think there's enough here. I tried to balance it. I hope there's enough here that longtime fans can still read it and have stuff to chew on. Yeah, no, it's good. Like you say, it does have that very much like a Last of Us vibe at the beginning where you know, you're starting very much on one person, but then it builds into the division that we, we know and love. So you've, uh, yeah, no, I agree. You did, a, you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, so without spoiling chat, this story is very much for me as the coming of an age of a division agent that someone that wasn't one, you know, perhaps turns, turns into one. Uh, was that always the intention for the story? Yes. Um, and I mean, the reality of it is like, I already admitted this. Uh, I wasn't the one who pitched this book. Yep. I had to take over. Uh, the grand arc of the story was already figured out before I came on board. Right. Okay. Uh, so as far as I know, that was pretty much always the idea. And I mean, that's useful because it lets you use the character of Myra, the, this new person as your audience surrogate. Um, she learns about, like, she's heard of the division, but she doesn't know how it operates. Yeah. And so as Myra learns, so do our characters. Um, or, I mean, so does the audience, Derp. And, yeah. um, yeah, so that was, that was useful. Uh, and then, of course, like, you know, we'll, like I said, we're going to be going on into Compromised, where Myra is no longer, and this one, this one I actually got to pitch. That one's going to be me from the ground up. Oh, so, right. okay. uh, cool that's yeah like i get to i got to come up with the whole idea for that one so i'm very excited um but uh yeah i'm I'm really i'm really excited god it's hard for me. i'm really excited to see for y'all to see where all of this is headed uh but i can't spoil things because then they'll just cancel me <laughs> um, and plus i don't want to ruin it for y'all i mean that's a lesser concern but uh the, i also don't want all my contracts canceled yeah, still gotta earn some money <laughs> yeah i still have to pay my bills unfortunately <laughs> That's great. Uh, so, do you have any plans then with the new book or the new, you know, books? Hopefully, that are that are coming to cross over into stories or characters we might already know about. Or is that too much? <laughs> uh, there will be. <laughs> <laughs> a good one, chat. It's a good one. God, he's uh, yeah. Um... Sorry, this is this is the carefulest I've been yet in this interview. <laughs> uh, there will always be echoes of oh, that's a ha huh, pun, uh, unintentional <laughs> pun um, of the uh, the characters that y'all know. But the reality is, even with ninety percent of the population gone, you don't want a small reference pool. It's still thirty three million people. You don't want it to just be like wow uh like these are the same people who were doing everything uh in washington dc and somehow <laughs> they're all over the place yeah um think of the difference between the division one and the division two yeah there's they're not the same set of people aside from some edge overlap yes um and i think that's the same thing you can expect from my work Oh, that's cool. So we might we might see you know Manny Ortega pop up somewhere or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and um, you know it's possible to roads for the other direction. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. That, oh, that's interesting, chat. That's interesting. Um, everything I create belongs to Massive, oh. so you we never know if someone could pop up elsewhere. We could see it the other way around as well. That would be cool. I never thought of it that way around. Them TU 15 and 16 coming chat. You never know. Uh, so then moving on a little bit then. Who was your easier question, I hope? Who was your favorite character in the book? I'll let, I'll let you just kind of name and not uh, tell us too much about them because we'd obviously we don't want to do spoilers. Okay. Yeah, Brenda. 100%. Brenda. So chat, you'll have to read to find out about Brenda, but you'll have to read. I mean, I'll, I'll say a little bit. Um, <laughs> Brenda is a seasoned agent. Yes. And... She was my chance to dig into the best and the worst of how the division works. Yep. And I think that's what really um, pulled me in. And that's all I'm going to say. That's it. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, so 
just uh, so there's obviously a lot of people in the chat that uh, haven't read or listened to the book yet. Is there anything else you would like to kind of tell them to maybe tip them over the edge if they were unsure to to read or not to? Um, <laughs> you know, like I, I mean, I never like to tell people what they should spend their hard-earned money on. Um, <laughs> I will be very grateful if you do. Uh, how about that? I am poor and i need you to buy my book um <laughs> please pitch. is that not a good, a good enough answer? um but no like uh I, this this is what i will say um i am i might not have been the biggest fan of the division beforehand i left it a fan i love the lore i love the world um and even if i had not it never left my mind that you guys love this stuff. And I wanted to make something for y'all that you would enjoy, that would enrich your experience, that would feel right to you. So um, if nothing else, like I, I do hope that if you do take the opportunity, that you will find something there that you enjoy. You can always tweet him after you've uh, you've read or listened to it, yeah, and tell him how good it is. Uh, yeah, you that. could. I mean, I'll just panic and be like, ha ha, and make a self-deprecating joke. But yeah, I, I, that's great. I'll retweet you. It'll be good. <laughs> um, I'm constantly selling out. I never stop selling out. That's you, I'm a mercenary. It's fine. That's how this works. It's okay. You're, good. you're in good company. I do it all the time. These guys are used to people selling out, so you're in good company for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have bills to pay. Get off my back, chat. Sounds um, familiar, chat. It sounds familiar. Yeah, I even have a sellout command. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead play it uh, that's good yeah like there we go you yeah, boom go pay this man because he's helping me um and then come pay me and then just pay everyone with all that if you're just rich just give me money how about that uh, <laughs> it's going into slightly different territory this interview chat <laughs> well i mean check out my only fans no um <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't have made that joke massive i'm sorry i didn't mean it uh it was a hilarious we have an, we have an only fans command as well it's, it's all good it's like you read our minds <laughs> so, um but yeah so i mean yeah like i i i appreciate everyone who takes a chance i am a new author and um it's hard to be a new author because you don't have that name recognition going for you so if you do take the chance, I, I hope I hope it's worth it because I did my best. That is what you get from me is always my best. Yeah, yeah I can uh, upvote from me. Honestly, it's brilliant. And like I said to you before, being a, a division fan, it was uh, it was just brilliant for for me to listen to. It was uh, it was really really good. So we're coming nearing the end of my questions chat. I've only got two left. Don't worry, and then hopefully uh, we might be able to get a few questions from you guys. Um. So is there anything else you uh, you want to tell? Mainly me, I guess, this one's for. Uh, the continuation <laughs> of Myra's story. Uh, is there any, any you know, little sneak peeks you can uh, let me sneak know? Or any little secrets? Hmm. Was Myra your favorite character? Yes, she was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Myra... <laughs> Myra made a big decision at the end of the book. Yes. Um... And it was under terrible circumstances, but she made the call. And she's going to have to deal with that. Yep. Um, and I think that's what you can expect from her story going forward is not, it's not a question anymore of can she live this life? It's a question of does she want to? Yeah. yeah. So that is what I will say. That's good. I did have one other question that I came up with halfway through. So, and then chat, I'll, you know, we'll let you at him. Um, in I can the... guess what the first question from chat's going to be because it's come <laughs> up like 20 times <laughs> there isn't there, it's got, I don't want to cross spoilers a little bit but in the game, in Division 2 we have specialisation uh, classes uh, they, they never really made an appearance, is that something we can expect in the future or, or maybe not <laughs> I don't want to disappoint anybody um because we all love the, the TAC-50. weapons might show up. We all love the TAC-50. I'm not going to... Or the grenade launcher. The TAC-50... Yeah, you might launcher. see the weapons, especially deployed as, like, emergency, like, to justify their specialness in the games. Yes. Yep. Um, but the, the idea of, like, 
you hit a special rank and now you get a special gun like that just it uh <laughs> it's it sort of breaks verisimilitude down a little bit yes um yeah. so do not expect me to spell it out in those terms because that's just not the approach i'm taking yeah we'd love to see that snap that attack 50 come out at some point and take a an emer- I, I an can't emerg- promise. I'm not emergency- making promises. If he gets an emergency headshot in the next book chat, you know it's because of this interview. You know, like the it'll be because 50. of y'all. Yeah, we're gonna hold a vote. <laughs> um, that's what I, that's what I'll do on Twitter. I'm gonna put up all of the specialty weapons, and I'm gonna be like, you guys get to pick one Ooh. to show up, just because I'm really mean. <laughs> um, I'll be bribing everyone. Tap fifty. Tap fifty. Yeah, that's 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 how that's gonna go. <laughs> so keep your eyes peeled for that delicious uh, poll. There we go, chat. But, uh, but that, yeah, I mean, that, I, I mean, it's funny because I could promise, I could promise y'all the moon. Uh, if Massive reads what I write and they're like, no, nah, then the answer's no. Nah. <laughs> um, like, You've been listening to that tickle. No, get it crossed yeah, out. Get it crossed out. Don't you? This is why we didn't want you to talk to the fans. They're psychopaths. <laughs> and I'm like, so you're saying that the excess of headshots of the story is a bad thing? Okay, <laughs> my bad. That was, that was me. All of a sudden, they've got 100% headshot accuracy. (laughs) Yeah, that's weird. How they went from like... Well, no, that was actually fun. That's a fun note to sort of close out, I guess, this part of the interview, is that I actually tried to draw a distinction between Myra's accuracy and, like, the division agent accuracy. Yes. And as you read through, it might be fun to be like... To to realize just how stupidly accurate the division agents are presented as. (laughs) Relative to Myra, who will do stuff like fumble shots yeah, and yeah, uh, nice. like curse at herself for it and stuff, because she's like a re- yeah, you know, they're not super soldiers, but they are still you know incredibly badass. Yeah. Part of the story is her transformation from someone more normal into one of them. Yeah. And you're all gonna yeah, pick like, up on that now, chat. You'll, when you're reading it, you'll all pick up on that now. Yeah, they you, y'all have, yeah, see that's the danger though. You're gonna start to see how the sausage is made. That's gonna take you out of it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Are you okay? Your, your a... chat is mean to you. This is a good they, Twitch channel. You can always, always tell. They're always mean to me all the time. Yeah, because no, that's good. Like any Twitch channel that's mean to the streamer is a good Twitch channel. That's my <laughs> official opinion. Like that's especially the mods. If mods are mean to their streamer, that's the key. Well, they tell me all the time I have no idea what I'm doing. Like they just, you know, I'm I'm just, I'm just the pretty face. That's why I like to look at it. They keep it going. <laughs> okay, so y'all have been is, are we done with do you have other questions? I think that you said that was the last that, one. That was the last one for me. Are you okay, okay. to to risk a few from Yeah, the chat? yeah. Well, okay, here's how we're going to do this because we, I don't want to just get flooded and have to like randomly pick them out. Here's I'm going to put this on you. Tickle. Okay, okay. They're going to say in chat the questions they want, and you're going to ask me the questions th- to answer. How about okay. that? Come on then, chat. Don't make me pick and then too they hard. They can be mad at Tickle. I know. They're like, why didn't you pick me for the question? Yeah, why didn't you pick me? And then they're not mad at me. It's brilliant. <laughs> I'm a scheming genius. God <laughs> yeah, damn. That, that is very good. All right, come on, chat. I saw a few questions flash up. Ask again. I'm not going to scroll back. Now is your chance. Now is your chance. If you have questions for me, put them in chat. Well, we've got a brand new one. Brand new viewer, how is it to write in an established universe versus creating your own from scratch? That's a good question. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I I, I didn't realize you were... Sorry, repeat. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, so, I zoned out for a second because I was reading chat. I knew exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. Oh, uh, no, yeah. What, let me, that was the first question. How is it yes. right to write an established universe? Yes. Um, it is stressful. Um, when it's my universe, I can do whatever I want, and nobody can tell me I've done it wrong. Um, when it is a pre-existing IP like this, not only do I answer to the company, but to a great extent, I answer to the fans. And I never lose sight of that. Honestly, I care way more about you guys liking it than I do the company. Um, because y'all are the one who buy it. And uh, <laughs> uh, and I need word of mouth. That is how books sell. Yep. yep. No, that's good. Um, but yeah, stressful is one of the big differences. Yep. No, um, though it's cool. I mean, it's nice to, you know, have fans uh, who are pre-existing fans. It's always fun. 
So I was like bullied when I was younger. <laughs> what a weird question. Why would you? Uh, yeah, I was bullied when I was younger. Oh my god, chat! I can't trust you with anything. Uh, we'll go with Ragins as the second question. Who is your favorite enemy faction? Um, enemy faction. My favorite enemy faction. Well, see, that's a difficult one. Do you mean the one that I like to hate the most? Uh, because that's probably the true sons, because they're douchebags. <laughs> um, and I would have spent the whole book just gleefully killing them if I could have gotten away with it. Um, the faction I felt the most sympathy for was the outcasts. And ironically, I think that's why they ended up being one of the main villains in the book was, um, just because I felt bad for them and I felt that that was, I always think a villain that you can connect with is better than one that you just don't like. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good question. Uh, Ritzy, I can answer that for you. Keener is not coming home. He is gone. Uh, what does the guy... Uh, go on. Ashes could be drift on the wind <laughs> if anywhere. <laughs> These technologies <laughs> bring him back. Uh, what does the guy we have, have to do to technology. get to uh, five gifted? No. I don't know. What does the guy have to do to get five gifted? That's a sellout question, rather. Um, when is the book taking place? We did cover that earlier on, Drickey. It's the most recent point in the Division universe. Right yes. Now. Uh, it starts in September after the events of the Division 2. Uh, so, oh, do they have gear brands in the book or will they? Gear brands. So he saw, so in the division we have like five eleven, uh, and you know, oh, like actual brands oh, for the gear. I did not concern myself with that. Um, would y'all like to see that? What do you reckon, chat? Is that something you want to see? Because we have all different ones like that. Uh, they all produce different s stats, I guess. So, see, I'm not going to engage on the level of stats. They they all have because uh, that's, kind that's of not how the world works. Yeah, uh, it's more but... like they have a. It could put, it could be more of a purpose, I guess. Like certain ones are good for shotguns, so they, I guess, a versatility around that gear would be that that one helps you. Only out. if the bonuses are accurate. <laughs> yeah, the other bonuses. It. Yeah, exactly. that's hilarious. I'm just looking um, at my DNA. So we have Empress here, you know, and that's a very skill orientated one. So it could have something to do with SHD, but yeah, it does come down to like a, more of a gaming level rather than a. Although they are real life brands, I believe some of them, if not all of them, um, yeah, that would be difficult, I guess. All right. Um, I don't think I really. I, the, the honest truth is no. I don't think the the brands really got engaged with in the first book. Maybe it's something that we can. Um... Good question, I can't make Alex. promises. Good question. I will Alex. look. I will look at them, and I will see what I can do with them. How about that? <laughs> uh, what is the ET? Did we ask when the ETA on the next book is? Uh, December of this year. Oh, there we go. Is that going to be earlier on um, Audible and things again? And like shipping? Uh, oh, don't ask me that question. No, that's fine. Um, we didn't intend to do that. That was not something that we meant to do. That was a result of just stuff going wrong. Um, I mean, Audible is always going to come out after the book because it takes time for... Um, you know, for somebody to record. Yes, yes. And then they have to, you know, edit the recording, et cetera, et cetera. That's always going to take longer. But um, the the ebook and paperback divide was not intentional. Hopefully it won't happen again. I can't promise that it won't happen again because I do not control logistics. Yeah, of course. Yep, yep. Uh, I already Ro answered that. I was not involved with the movie. Roman says, uh, thank you for the interview. And he's ordered the book. So there's one uh, one in the yes! bag. Yes. <laughs> thank you. That is lovely to hear. That made this worthwhile. Uh, I mean, not that I didn't love talking to Tickle, but <laughs> I am a mercenary, as we covered. <laughs> Tech asks, uh, is the story standalone from the previous books, or is there any overlap? Uh, standalone. Um... I did not, it wasn't my decision, but we wanted people to, um, to have a fresh start because I mean, we're a new publisher, a new writer, and, um, it's just easier to not try to pick up someone else's threads and instead start to weave our own. Yep. Uh, and there is a book too, we've just been talking about it. That is going to be December and Anz would like to know, how does he get an autographed copy? An autographed copy. 
that's tricky. Uh, because, I mean, I don't want to sugarcoat this. Like, I am both socially anxious and poor. Uh, so <laughs> if you catch, like, I, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to arrange appearances at cons. If you can catch me at one, that sure. would be a great way. If you catch me anywhere, I will sign a book for you. I, I, I um, won't promise anything, chat, but I will ask Thomas off stream. Don't hold me to anything. I might see if I can get some copies, send them over. And uh, I'll pay for the shipping and stuff, and we might do some, you know, a giveaway. If you will cover point. the shipping, I will go ahead and say that yes, I will sign copies, and there you can go, give them chat. away. I will, uh, I will arrange that in the future. As soon as the UK book lands, I'll, uh, I'll sort out some shipping, and uh, yeah, we can, we can do that. We can give it away get here as well. That sounds like a great way to pay uh, you. We back held him to ransom chat. Idea. We did, we did it live. He had to say yes. I know, like you put me on the spot. <laughs> Sweat beads, like that. I didn't want the camera because so y'all couldn't see just the sweat beads rolling down my face in terror. <laughs> um, uh, is there a lead into the Heartlands game at all? If there was, it wasn't intentional. I don't know anything about Heartlands. There we go. Good, 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 good. Uh, is there a faction or other concept from the Division universe that you'd like to write about that you wasn't able to write about in Recruited? Yes. <laughs> there was <laughs> and that is all i'm gonna say there we go maybe coming because soon. there's more books and yeah. maybe if i didn't get to do it and recruited maybe i'll get to do it in the future uh cass just agreed with Anne's. uh if there is a law behind the brand sets they would like to hear about them uh, yeah uh, like i said I'll, I'll look into it like that's genuinely not something i engaged with at all i was way more worried about um other parts of the yeah. lore uh but like i'll look at it if there's something cool there I, i'm happy to try to weave it in Cass, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Uh, 511 is an actual gear store. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I thought, I thought I'd never carry them before. Have we got any more questions, chat? Uh, we asked about the Netflix movie. He's not involved, sadly, but you never know if Netflix are watching. They're everywhere. Um, maybe give them specializations. Okay, yes. Would you be interested? Um, oh, this is a good question. Uh, would you be interested if you got offered in being part of the writer's team for a future game. Yeah. Um, I would love to break into like video game writing. Um, but the truth is that as with anything, it's a different set of skills. Um, I'm a novelist and I write short stories. I've never written for a computer game before. Um, and they have people who do that full time. So, like, I'm not going to hold my breath. I don't think anybody should be expect uh, <laughs> that to happen. <laughs> but, um, and like I said... Well, well Massive, if the offer's the... Yeah, like, I, I shit, give me a salary job again where I can write. <laughs> um, it's freelancers and it's the dogs. It's for the dogs, damn you. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, that would that would be really cool. I would love to to, to get into that world. Uh, Cruson just purchased the digital and uh, the, purchased the digital no. and audio. Yeah, let me take a second. Thank you so much, everyone who's saying they're ordering. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, it is the it is the best. If you enjoy it, please. If you read the first one and you enjoy it, please do pre-order the second one because believe, like publishers care about that stuff, and um, they track stuff like pre-orders, and that's what tells them in a big way that they want this series to continue. I'm very lucky. I have a very loyal set of, uh, of viewers that have uh, stuck by me over the last few years, and they're very good like this. I can definitely give you the thumbs up. They're very loyal, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, they uh, will come back to you as well and uh, hopefully support the books going forward. I will get the, off, the, off the first book, though, chat. Off the first book, it's awesome. So re you read it, listen to it. I do highly recommend it. Like me, we all love the games here. And uh, I'm sure you will uh, absolutely enjoy it as well. Also, whoever asked earlier if I am married, I am not. Uh, so huge catch on the market right now. <laughs> you uh, might get some secrets. Am... You might get some inside yeah. tips. You know. There you go. Like, yeah. If you want to know what's happening in the book next, all you have to do is marry me. Like, that's the simple. <laughs> no. Um <laughs> Uh, so Rajin asked, uh, "Will you bread? Uh, will you breadcrumb your story lead into Division Three at all?" That's a that is not my decision. Yeah. Um, 
The guys that, at Massive. That happens, yeah, like, Massive decides everything about all of that. Um, like I said, the, the, the idea for this book is mine. Um, so if it leads into three, then that would be very shocking. Uh, I would, I would be very flattered. Um, <laughs> but I can tell you that the people who are working on it are passionate about it. And, um, I think that I would love to see a more story rich format for them because I think they have some great stories to tell. Yeah. Yeah. We all want more. We've been wanting more division for a, a long, long time. Uh, we're all very, very loyal uh, around here for Division. We absolutely love it. We just can't wait to uh, get our hands on more, whether it be games, books, comics, you know, uh, absolutely uh, anything. Uh, we had one very generous donation uh, from Beanans for $200, and he sent me money to buy books to get autographs. Oh, wow. So that is... Uh, that is yeah, we'll definitely make that happen. Then. We definitely we will make, make that, that happen. Uh, happen. So thank you very much, Beanans. That is absolutely awesome. Um. Tosh comes up with an absolutely excellent suggestion, uh, more than a suggestion rather than a question. If there was in the next book a character to be called Tickle or my dog's name, Lincoln, that would be amazing. So no pressure there, no pressure. Just, uh, um, just, a, just a small cameo, you know. Maybe somebody <laughs> no, pressure. no pressure. No pressure. We're just putting you on the spot and want you to talk about it live. Just, 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 um, just slide the name Tickle uh, in there or uh, Lincoln the dog, then uh, anything like that. We, no, you don't have to answer now, just... I'll just let you think of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll let that marinate. It's That's obviously got to fit. And, that? You know, it's got to get massive approval. I know I understand. Yeah, we, you know, but uh, you know, we're friends with the guys at Massive. You know, we, we've had Yannick in here before and all them guys. So I'll, uh, I'll drop oh, yeah, in. you guys should have Lauren on too. She would, uh, if you can get her, oh, if yeah, she's willing. I, try, um, I, I, I am hopefully trying to continue this. So you're, uh, you're my first and I can go, oh, look at how well of a job this was and how well this went. You should definitely... Let me They're going to be thing. like, he referenced OnlyFans. <laughs> um, and now we are never, we're actually going to have to ask that you never mention our products ever again. Like, I, if also, going, he's gone. If you're good enough to do Because of this again. interview. So, like, good job. Yeah, <laughs> these, like, that's where this is headed. These rules um, need to be way stricter next time. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not mention anything that will get you cancelled. Um... <laughs> Uh, this takes place in September after the Division Two. There we go. Sean and Jeremy both nabbed the book as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm tunnel rat. I'm not asking that question. Uh, I can shoot God, my. Did foot. I miss something terrible? Uh, he said, "How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop roll?" Ah. Uh... I do know the answer, but I'm under an NDA. <laughs> Questions um, about the book chat. Come on, <laughs> we are diverting I'm sorry. heavily. I wish I could tell you how many licks it takes, uh, but I would I would lose my contracts if I was honest with you about that secret. So we, we are having an order party, right? Sinister is ordering it on payday. Casey Guns has just ordered it. Even better, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I was thinking of Alex Irvine, who wrote the two division books and wrote for the games too. All oh, right, so you was wondering if the the same thing would happen with Thomas. Got you, got you, got you. Uh, uh I mean, in the sense that <laughs> I don't know what that means. That the same thing would happen to me. Like, does something happen to him? I, th I think they're That's hoping dark. that uh, you might get the same kind of gig, be able to write for both. Oh, does he write for it now? Yeah, well, he's, I don't oh. know. He said Alex Irvine wrote the first two, two division books and also has wrote for the game. So I would have to fact check that. Well, that's that, fancy. But, yeah, that is fancy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if that happened for him, then... um, Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe we, we, Dark Scarlet, from we're, your lips to God's ears. We're, we're in the country, or where in the world are you? Uh, you've got 26th of May. Yeah, where are you in the world? We'll, we'll hopefully be able to hook you up with a, a release date for wherever you are. Okay, I'm hearing. I, I can answer that a little bit. Oh, um, I'm hearing twelfth. Like we are shooting for the twelfth. Some things are reporting the twenty sixth for the UK release. Um, if you're on the continent or if you're in the UK, fingers crossed for the twelfth. If it happens on the twenty sixth, I'm sorry. Like we don't control a lot of these factors, unfortunately. Um. There's just a worldwide shipping problem that everyone's having to deal with. Uh, and 
if you're in the States, though, you should be able to get it whenever you want it. It's already here. And every hundredth copy comes with a free free sample of the green poison. <laughs> um, so look out for that. You know, that's a, that's a that's an immersion factor that we bring home to you. Um, rich in each page. <laughs> Chad, get, get your get your final questions in. We won't hold Thomas Ransom uh, much longer. Five uh, minutes. I'm going to leave it four. I don't oh, care. I don't care go. what he says. He's put a he's put a deadline on us now, chat. Uh, Cass says, uh, how many books uh, have you got planned for the series? If you were allowed to write as many as you If wanted. I could write, I would write a million books and you guys would pay vast sums of money for them. No, um, I have ideas for three. Okay, great. Yep. It would be a trilogy. Um, but it, it's not under my control is an important factor to mention here. Yep. yep. Um, can someone eat a Twinkie in the next book? <laughs> uh if that happens ritzy i expect you to write me a thank you letter <laughs> like personally like heartfelt not what i want from you if someone eats a twinkie is for you to start saying thomas parrot is my husband instead of aaron keener that's my demand <laughs> like you have to sack. You have to give up on Aaron and love me instead. <laughs> a little fun That's fact. That's the demand. We sent the massive office when they used to do the, you know, the state of the game show. They used to come on every week uh, on uh, and kind of say, you know, the game's having these problems or we're getting these updates or, or whatever. We sent the massive office a huge box of Twinkies, one of my community members, and they hid them around the uh, around the set when it was live, and we had to find them. And nobody in chat, apart from my community, knew what was going on. That's. Are there? Did they find them all, or they're just like? <laughs> yes, I think we did. I think Ella a really con- disgusting Twinkie somewhere. Ella, like, I I... Ella confirmed we found them all. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, oh, Tex has put a character in with bad English. He's referencing me, though. Uh... <laughs> You've been you... fi- look. I have heard worse. Okay, like they. I, I mean, I, I'm putting myself out here. I'm defending you. Yeah, that's Tickle. very, so... very nice of you. Because when we were talking about it yesterday, I was like, they were like, have they, has he heard you talk? I was like, no, I've purposely done everything in DMs. <laughs> <laughs> like, my English is uh, is not... I didn't want him to English. realize before the interview. Yeah, that he might be coming to somebody he can't really understand very well. Yeah, no, I, I get, like, she's asked me 200 times in this chat alone whether Aaron Keener's in my book. <laughs> so, like, I understand what I'm demanding, but that's, that's the trade-off. Um, we all give up the things we love for the things we want. Isn't that just, like, the story of life? Uh, Chaos, uh, really quickly, right. we did cover that. It's right now. It's the latest uh, in the story entry. So I think right. One more question. One sensible question, chat. One sensible question. Cassie's ordering it on payday. Tunnel rat. Thanks for asking. You're very welcome, mate. Uh, <laughs> one sensible question. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. We asked that raging. Yes, it is standalone. Have we got I'm anything? not going on a raid with y'all. We're not doing it. Stop saying that. <laughs> I'm want, not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing myself. They want you to play the game with us. Um. Look, here's what, you know what? Here's what I will tell you. If, if I earn out my advance on this book, I will come back on your channel and I will do a raid with y'all. There we go, chat. So pass it on. Buy everyone for Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries. And y'all can laugh your hearts out about how terrible I am. The whole lot. Uh, Dark Scarlet says, can we have you back for another stream? I would... I will very much invite him back uh, in December, I guess, when the the next book out. Hopefully, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm always out to promote myself. I'm a mercenary, as we discussed. You are, you are, you've got access to my Discord. You are always very welcome to uh, drop any kind of advertisement or anything you need to in here. You uh, you are now part of the community. You are very welcome, Thomas. All right, thank you so much. You guys have been great. Uh, but uh, chat, thank you for having me, Tickle. Please say thank you to Thomas for giving up his time and uh, coming and uh, listening to all of our questions. Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciated it. It's been absolutely no, amazing. No, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been great. All right. Y'all have a lovely evening. Good night, Thomas. Thank you very much. Thank you again.
How awesome was that chat? He was great, wasn't he? Yeah, that was cool. He was really good when he chat. Really, really, really good. Really down to earth guy. Thank you everyone that ordered the book while he was here as well. I'm sure that really does mean uh, mean a lot uh, to him. 